Alright. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good day to everybody. Um, we are here today for our um, uh, road show, the fourth uh, road show um, for our brown bag session um, about um, flip learning um, organized by ADEC. My name is Eliza. I'm from the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Science. Uh, I am the moderator today. Uh, today we have another two um, panel um, that will be discussing about the experience um, uh, in, uh, in, in um, implementing flip teaching. I think um, we had a, we had a bit of um, uh, a mixture of uh, blended and flipping teaching today. So in the past it would it would have been the only um, a flip technique, but today we have a, a, a mix of both um, blend, blend um, learning and flip learning. So the first uh, panel, I would like to introduce you to um, Dr. Nor Haryanti Mohsin. Um, she received uh, her PhD in Instructional Technology from University of Malaya, and now she has become a Senior Lecturer in Curriculum and Instructional Technology Department, Faculty of Education. Her research interest focuses on digital education, instructional technology, and digital digital TVET, flip learning, and online educa education. So she particularly practiced online learning in her teaching. Yeah, Dr. Nohayanti will listen more about um, uh, Dr. Dor Hayanti, Dr. Pun Mala, and Alagafar. Um, Dr. Pun Mala has been an entrepreneurial educator for more than 12 years, eh, Dr. Pun Mala. Um, as an entrepreneurial educator, she has been successful at level, leveraging expertise to assist students with making forward thinking plans and capitalizing on either online businesses or social enterprises. Innovative in bringing proven success in implementing experiential learning and bootcamp based curriculum, delivery and assessment tools. So, so it, 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 it seems that we have um, two experts here in, in uh, flip learning. So, um, without um, any delay, I would like to um, ask um, the first kind of like not question, but um, uh, I think as as an opening to this session, I would like um, each of the panel to um, share your experience or what are the things that actually um, brings you or interests you in implementing uh, flip learning in your teaching. So perhaps we can start with Dr. Nor Hayanti. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Thank you so much Dr. Eliza and Dr. Ponmala and everyone. Okay, um, what inspired me to start flipping? Actually, I started this with my kids, yeah? Okay, I accidentally start with them, okay, because um, I I bought uh, so many books to them, and then um, I I I need to I need them to finish all the books before end of the year, uh, waiting the syllabus. So I asked them to study in advance. I said, okay, why don't you study on your own in advance, and then you start uh, by referring to the notes, online notes, actual notes, the textbook, and then um, start doing the exercise on your own. Okay. Do it first. If you do, and if you don't understand, you can refer to the notes and everywhere. But then, after you have finished your task, then only give it to me. I will do the marking. I said. So at first, uh, it's quite challenging because they they rebel and they don't want to do that. But then I encourage them. I said, you can do. You 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 try it first, okay? So they try and and they complete the exercises and they ask me to mark and. I can say out of 10, um, 50% they they can answer. <clears throat> Only 50% they don't know how to answer. And then when they go to school, when it comes to that topics, um, they feel very happy because they have the prior knowledge on that things. So when and they come back, they said, hey, me, thanks so much because you asked us to study in advance. So at least when in class they can understand better on what their teacher um say and everything lah compared to their friends because they said their friends is just like uh, sit and hear and focus on the teacher but they but for my kids they said they can um they can um 
they can answer whatever teacher ask them because they have already practiced it earlier. They have already um, studied the topics earlier at home. So I um, I try it of quite interesting. It's their understanding and save their time. They don't have to come back and do the revision on, on the topic uh, they learn in schools. They learn in advance, they go to school, do the exercises, and then they come back, they say they understand the topic. So this inspired me to start flipping my class and I've tried to to uh, a few students lah until now. Dr. Tariza, your microphone. All right. Uh, uh, I, I do that all the time. Uh, all right, before we, we go on um, and move on to Dr. Purmala and, and hear um, what uh, inspired her in, in doing uh, blended and flip learning, I think um, uh, just a little bit of definition of what flip learning is. I think flip learning, um, as, my, as, as, as what we all may be aware, flip learning is basically like we're flipping, we're flipping the table or we're flipping the chair. So we are actually um, flipping the classroom and the, the, the and we empower the students to uh, uh, do uh, pre-work reading and, and, and we give them all the um, materials where they, they do self-learning self first and then when they come to us, then we we are more like a facilitator, eh, Dr. Dr. Rianti? So we are more like a facilitator. We facilitate the learn, learning and and mm. um, and most of the learning experience are actually coming from the students. So I think uh, that's a, a brief definition of what flip learning uh, is all about. So Dr. Ponmala, you want to share with us what um, work on teaching? Experience is um, slightly different because um, I actually um, want I actually wanted to look at something that the students can do in a form of self-directed learning because they were having internet issue, uh, not enough data la, I cannot know Wi-Fi la. They were going on in that mode while during the during the pandemic. So I was thinking of um of of doing something self-directed self-directed and that's when I, I came across flipped. So initially, to be honest, I didn't really do flip. I don't know what I was doing, to be honest with, with you also together with the students. Uh, what I did was that um, I wanted some form of self-directed learning so that they can learn um, anywhere, any place, anytime on their own without having to coming in only at that time to see me. So that's how I actually um, discovered and decided to work on, on FLIP. That's how I started off. That's how my idea on FLIP started off, la, which has continued till now. The student seems to like that, <laughs> you know, do learning at their own time and space so they can save their data for Netflix. <laughs> how long have you been practicing FLIP for? Um, actually, I started flip back in 2020. I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to be two years now. Like, it's going to be two years now already. So four semesters already. Yep, two years. So, Dr. Yanti, how long have you been practicing uh, flip classes? Almost for? the same with Dr. Ponmala. It's about two years. So when the pandemic sort of like come and everybody kind of like resorted to, um, yeah. to using online, um, I yeah. think in the past, some of the PTJs were sort of like... Um, like ask um, to do and back then we were set after that i think um um this is where we started to um resort to using a lot of um self-directed learning okay moving on to the next one how do you how do you guys prepare for i think because where i am i am now where i am at um we, when we talk about flip learning um I think one of the challenges um, lecturers come back and tell me is, oh, it's going to take a lot of work preparing and that kind of stuff, you know. So um, maybe listening to you, you, you guys' ex experience in preparing for flip learning can um, inspire us and kind of like, you know, um, direct us in the right way of um, preparing our own flip class. Maybe Dr. Yati first? Okay. Um, normally, this become the most the biggest challenges in in doing flip learning okay before we start with our student we start with us first <laughs> and i was i found that is very very challenging for me because i need to think in advance on what kind of activities or tasks that i'm going to give to the students um even though uh, I, I I keep on thinking do, when when I was driving, when I was cooking, when I was whatever I do, I always think is this uh, suitable to to be implemented uh, for my students? 
okay, is this activity okay or not? Okay, how about this activity? How about that activity? Actually, preparing the teaching materials is the most challenging part and why people don't like to do flip learning. <laughs> because everything we need to do it in the first it really um, crashed my head lah to find the, the activities and everything in advance. But then once I've started, uh, it will be okay for me. Um, normally, I have um, I have um, my own bank of um, activities. Okay, uh, um, I will do it alternately. Let's say um, for this week, let's say if I do... Um, Full time teaching. I mean, I um uh, not say not to say full time teaching. If I if we seriously um teach and learn so next week, I will do activity fully activity. Uh, so then I will save my activities. I don't need to do it at each and every week. Okay, but then during the 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 serious teaching and learning week, I will do uh I still have an activity, but it likes uh just like um. Uh, a discussion or brainstorming uh, is a simple activity that I can do it on the spot. Uh, so I can save others for the next <laughs> uh, activities for the next classes. So things like that. And I also Google, I, 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 I try to share and find um, other uh, ideas from other lecturers or teachers or educators on how to to make a um, variety of activities in implementing flip classroom so perhaps you would like to share the um the tools you have for your flip classes uh, or the the medium or the the platform that you use for your flip class flip class. I, I am love to use online uh, platform eh? i use padlet i use um mentimeter i use socrative that one is is for discussion uh, purpose. Normally, I will ask them to to give their feedback uh, using this kind of platform because um, it will, at the same time, it will give something like, um, um, it will boost their interest and motivation to listen to what I want to say because it's about online, online gaming. Because uh, students nowadays, they prefer, they prefer to to engage in online things, but then I also do um, uh, physical activities like debate, okay, having a debate session, a storytelling session, um, group presentation, group presentation tu macam biasa lah, normal, normal activities lah. Face-to-face uh, lah. Mm -hmm. uh, sharing experience and doing this kind of activities, I always encourage them by providing a small token because I want them to actively participate during the class. So when they when they said, okay, Dr. Yanti, for this week, what do you have for us? I say, I have sneakers. If you participate in the activity. So they, they give a very good participation during the class. So reward is very important, yeah? Yeah. Buying and buying the token for them is one of my groceries list. <laughs> That's very interesting. It's not just for your kids, eh? it's for your yeah. it's, uh, for your kids at school as well. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, Dr. Punmala, what about you? So, uh, blended flip learning or flip teaching or flip classes? I actually echo what um, Dr. Yanti just mentioned. Um, it's not easy to start um, um, blended or flipped learning. I mean, um, I would honestly say that I was groping in the dark. Um, so, um, what I did was... Um, you know, during the pandemic, you know, there was so much of materials on the internet with everyone doing flip, blended, future learning, don't know what learning, every other learning in the thing. So I did, a, okay, one, I, I must be confess honestly i did a lot of reading on the internet to actually understand how it has to be done one so um i looked at my course content and i decided how am i going to to do it and then two i did ask for help so i did get help from from um the organization from um actually magic to help me with the videos that uh, need to be uploaded i did get help right and number three um, my son became my <clears throat> the biggest criticizer 
uh, he's actually studying in Taylor's and uh, he was also having online classes. Um, uh, he used to say, God, you're so boring. <laughs> so that's <laughs> terrible to hear. So I decided <laughs> that I, I have to make it more interesting and not boring. And then he would make comments like, I mean, it's can be quite, mm, you feel like killing him. Why is the video so long? Huh? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, but I didn't mind the criticism because um, if he can criticize me, I'm sure the students have it in their mind, but they just don't tell me that. So he, and, and fortunately, um, <clears throat> I did what Dr. Yanti did. I spoke to a lot of private colleges because they are the ones who were going into this uh, learning. So I actually spoke to quite a lot of them and then I decided to work on it. So um, I had um, recorded videos where I, uh, they saved supportive materials together with my own materials. So I kind of streamlined everything to make it uh, more approachable for the student. So it was um, it was um, not easy um, in the first semester. I must tell you, it was quite disastrous when I first started. <laughs> disastrous to the fact that the students actually commented openly, but uh, it was a learning lesson together with the students. Um, so um, when these materials were uploaded, uh, what I was advised to do was that to ensure that the learning has taken place after every video or content that's been uploaded there would be a quiz given to them and the way the quiz is actually given this is not a lot of questions it's just five or six questions the most that is given uh, the quiz um, the way the answer the quiz cannot be general it has to be very pertaining to the content of the video so that you know that they have watched it they have read the supporting material so that they would know how to answer it uh, so that was was the quiz that I had to do. So the preparing the quiz was another thing. So I had to know the content by heart so that I can prepare the quiz, you know, correctly so that they can actually do the quiz. So that was one of it that I had to do. So that was one part. I cannot be having quiz for everything, right? The students will kill me. So then I had to, you know, come up with assignment based things. So then how do I prepare for assignment? So I what I did was um, the group assignment, I broke it up into small, small portion. Every week is just 5% only. You do one part of the assignment, then they would compile the whole thing together. So then it becomes a complete assignment. So I used to break it up. So every week they had something to do. Um, so at Spectrum, my Spectrum was my base because at that time, I, okay, like, I'm i not so technologically inclined to be honest with you. I only knew how to use Spectrum. So I transferred the whole thing into Spectrum, but I found Spectrum to be also quite friendly and edX, mm -hmm. especially Miss Umu was very um, patient with me to answer all my questions and help me with all my problems with the technology. So I use Spectrum and I also use Padlet and um, one of the things that I must, I don't know, in my class, I found the participation increase because I allowed the students to be anonymous. So when they sign in into Padlet, I keep telling them you can use, you don't have to put in your full name. You can use your party name, but you can stay anonymous as long as I see the participation. So I said, I can see the number of students is 60, participation must be 60. If not, I will go back and check who didn't participate. So, I mean, that was a little bit of a threat there. So everybody participated and they were quite open with their discussions on Padlet. Everyone participated because it was anonymous. So nobody knew who said what. So I found that participation seemed to have increased in class. All right. Uh, very interesting um, way of um, starting your um, flip uh, journey. Um, <clears throat> I hope that um, gives some um, inspiration to the rest of us who are still um, crawling to start our flip uh, journey. I think, um, yeah, I think that is the biggest challenges um, we currently have. Um, um, uh, we are not, like I myself, um, it's not um, tech savvy. <laughs> so, you know, I think um, the new way of the, the world is moving um the 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 teaching has to be because i i actually um to be honest struggle with conservative or conventional teaching the two hours is like you know last time two hours seems to fly like you know but now it's just so hard to get their attention i think the most they, they pay attention is half an hour and that and after that everybody is on their phone and I, I you know god knows what what they do and what you, they watch on the phone and we might as well use that to optimize our teaching and get them involved. So 
ultimately this is the way to go um yeah with regards to all the challenges um we hope um i hope you know you don't mind um you know dr yanti and dr pun mala for some of us who might want to get um more information maybe we can sort of like get um uh, your contact in the end and maybe um contact you for um for the reference all right so um I, we kind of like talk a little bit about the challenges and uh, uh, when 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 um both of you were talking about how you sort of like started your flip classes but was there any particular challenges beside um preparing for the actual flip learning uh, implement implementing it you know when um when you guys were uh, carrying it out was there any particular challenge in terms of um students or yourself or um with the technology was it was there any um hiccups or challenges that you guys stumble upon uh, while carrying out um flip class but from me need to prepare the content in advance there's also challenges come from the student because i start this during um covid-19 uh, during the pandemic same with with uh, dr pun mala just now okay flip learning um online flip learning is a bit tough compared to physical flip learning because what i need their participation to to participate in the class 100% participation i have about 45 students uh in online learning and to That's ensure true. that each and every student participate in the learning is quite quite challenging at that time because um when they of course um in one big class there are students who are very high motivated to to participate there are also students that um they do everything on their own they don't even um switch on their camera i don't even know whether they are in front of the camera or they are doing something at their room or their house because when when i call their name to get the the feedback they just silent <laughs> <laughs> so i assume that uh, maybe they are the concentration is 50 50 maybe they are doing something something at their own place and well, at the same time they are listening to my to my class lah and then uh, i give them some times because uh, it's not easy to get uh, participation from all okay uh, and they are not uh, familiar with my styles at the beginning okay but then i give them some time my first my first class i just slowly i'll get them um, okay i i know actually who are who are reading who are doing a uh, self learning at home who are not because when it comes to the class when i ask there are student who can answer me very well and there are also student who cannot answer and just silent uh, they close their camera and they mute their speaker <laughs> so i i do not know how to reach them uh, i don't even know their 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 contact number because they don't put their name there in the group so i don't even know that i don't know how to force them but slowly uh, when they when i i can saw the uh, when they accidentally um switch on their microphone or their camera so i ask the name i um slowly i when i give um the question or do the activities i involve them to the activities and then uh i can see that towards the end of this the semester um they did very well maybe their type of learning is not as same as their friends i guess the because our students type of learning is different right so maybe they are not like others they have their own type of learning so to get their participation and motivation to join our flip classroom is very challenging but then we cannot force them because once i force them or i penalize them they will ban me and they will give bad marks to my cheat test of course yes. it will affect your cheat test <laughs> yeah i don't want it to happen <laughs> so i need to do to and then i can see towards the end of the semester they they join they uh, participate in the activities and then they score whatever project or quiz that i give to them 
uh, and then during the presentation they also um, participate because initially they don't participate in the in the presentation they say if i put them in a group they have four person in a group uh, yang satu tu they they macam silently i don't know whether they are exist or not but then towards the end of the semester uh, they give a, a good um cooperation to my class the participation is is the most the most biggest challenges uh, in this flip classroom and then um activity also another challenge because they are students uh, they have the introvert and extrovert type of personality so for extrovert students they love to join the activities they love to expose yes. themselves whether online or physical classroom but for introvert students um normally they reluctant to participate they have the idea they know the answer already but they just um silent and be there okay so i need to call them i need to okay uh blah 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 so what is your um understanding about this thing about that thing then only they will answer me if i call their name if not they will stay there and just silent so this one also i i cannot force them to become extrovert like other friends I need to slowly um slowly educate them because I need to if you just do your own work in my class then I do not know whether you understand or not some of you don't get um any extra marks lah because you didn't participate in the activity but then um okay lah as for now I manage to cater all these kind of uh, <laughs> of uh, sure. challenges yeah so as la, so um participation rate has has gone to 100% now in your class not to say 100% you can la, say? but then i can say um, 90% okay uh, the one yeah, who didn't from... participate last semester when come to this semester they they can participate into my class uh, okay, you sure it's not because of the sneakers no 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 it's not about the sneakers <laughs> Uh, all right my challenges was okay my challenges were the first thing um i being um okay the first challenge i found was your instructions have to be super clear i use the word super clear so when the instruction is not clear i don't know what the students will do in the end you are the one who will be in trouble because you're going to mark the assignment and the, all the students will start blaming you because they say your instructions were not clear so i had to make sure that uh, one thing i noticed that my instruction has to be very clear and when you give instruction it has to be broken down very clearly one Two, three. Do this first, then do that first, because it's self-directed learning. <clears throat> and in my case, uh, because I also hold an admin position, <clears throat> my time is a bit of a, you know, my time is constrained. So the students are literally uh, have to do self-directed learning. So what I did was that um, I need to monitor the student, just like um, uh, said. If you don't monitor them, oh God, you don't want to know what you get at the end of the class. Fourteen weeks, it can be disastrous. <laughs> So what I did was that um, I, I, the first class, uh, they all come in together with me. Um, I, I, I tell them what is my expectation and what is expected out of them, what is going to happen in class and what they need to do and so forth. So um, basically what I use, because I use, um, uh, they are on MS team, so they have to be in breakout rooms. So I break them up in groups. I form the groups and then I break them out in groups and they go into breakout rooms. So when they go into breakout rooms, they have to do the activities in the breakout room. So I I would go to each room and I would speak to all the students. I mean, of course, I tell them to open their camera, which they never do. Okay, so never mind. But at least they mute, they unmute and speak to me. So I notice who is speaking to me. And while they are speaking to me, I take down names of students. And then um, I have this thing about calling the students randomly and they have to unmute and speak. If they don't, I'll consider them absent from class. So I do that. So they will have to open their mic and speak. So I notice who is volunteering, who is not volunteering because I have a list. So I would just tick on it. So I will start watching the students, uh, see how they are performing. That's one. And then um, they go. Then after that, they go into self-directed learning. And then after that, after three weeks later, um, I would have another class with them to explain uh, how to do the assignment. Then they do two weeks of self-directed learning and then they come back and then they would actually present to me during the 
pre-presentation of their assignment, uh, I'm very careful to observe that this is like a bell curve, you know. Uh, some students do very well. Uh, I would help really. So they they are doing they just want to check where they're at there are a group of students who are actually weak so these are the students that i actually capture and uh, i tell the students i'm having a tutorial session it's optional whether you want to come but this group have to come i don't say that they are weak but i say this group the assignment needs um, uh, rectification so please your attendance is compulsory so when they come in i actually help assist them they also feel a little better because there's nobody else in the group except them so they feel a little better because it's just them and me talking together. So it's a lot of attention on them. Uh, you may have to do that la, for a few groups. If you have 14 groups, then maybe four groups. Um, I would say 20% of your class may need help from you so that you need to discuss it with them and help them out with the assignment. Actually, the students appreciate it. La. Um, there will be one third case la, or one or one or two young back benches, which you may have missed out. I have, I have missed out there was one time i'm being honest here uh, one student i don't know how it happened i had missed him out completely i don't know how i missed him out he didn't even have a group and uh, when the submission of the assignment was due i somehow rather realized that i was short of one student i kept saying uh, did he do his confirmation of the course and you know i was like freaking out on the 12th week where the hell is this boy then I sent a lot of WhatsApp messages and finally he personally WhatsApp me and said that he just cannot get along with anybody in the class. He couldn't mm -hmm. get along with another 79 students. He couldn't get along and he didn't have a group. So I asked him, what do you want me to do now? He said, I will do the entire group assignment on. I told him, frankly, minus you won't get marks for group effort. I told him that. So he said it's fine. So he submitted. So that has happened before. I think it happened in some the second time I was teaching it. I somehow rather missed him out. I don't know how it happened. So that was one. And the other thing that um, I did was that to ensure there was active learning and the students actually uh, not so much from me. Um, I got the peers to do it. This is something that I picked up from the private universities um, is to get to do what they have to discuss with their peers on assign uh, on the assignments and they have what we call peer assessment and review. This peer assessment and review is anonymous. That means uh, say there's five people in a group. Um, student one will have to assess student two, three, four and five. And the I mean, it's a lot of work for me to read. La, but then um, it's very, very effective. Reason being is that they assess the students on a variety of things from a scale of one to five. So I've told the students if this scale, if if for student one, if student two, three and four, all of them rate you three and below, something is wrong. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to ask you what happened. It's understood that you didn't contribute. So your grades will drop. So they all were very concerned about that because I made it very clear in class and I explained to them that it cannot be that all of them don't like you. If all of them don't like you, you should tell me in the beginning itself. Why tell me on the 14th week? You obviously did not contribute. If you did contribute and you feel that they were unfair to me, show me the proof that you did contribute. I, I will I will reconsider, I said. But it's never come to that because all of them contribute because it carries their assessment. So, so they are very careful with it. So I found that when I implemented that, uh, everything seems to fall beautifully now. Everyone is working together. They know. In fact, uh, I've been going to. I'm in fact. I had one autistic child in my class last semester, and um, he was brilliant, but he was socially handicapped. He couldn't work with the group, and the group. Sadly for me, I don't mind saying this, sadly for me, my and that particular group, we had students from China. So it was so chaotic because the China students were in China, this student was here, and then there's another Malaysian student. Oh God, I had hell actually. Finally, I had to intervene. And I told the China students, don't get stressed out. Just tell him exactly what he has to do. I will make sure that in no way I'm going to bring any of the other students' marks down because he cannot present, but let him do what he has to do. I say the child is trying. Written work, beautiful. 
excellent piece of work. But when it comes to presenting, working mm. together with others, he seems to have some form of handicap. Not so serious, but if you want to get an A, perhaps you won't get that A. Lah. But I told them, no worries. So finally, we work together. So you may have some of these issues with students. So um, don't ask me how I picked up. Nobody told me, but when that student... Uh, opened this camera and spoke to me, I, I seemed to realize something was not right. So finally, later on, we found out that he was autistic and uh, and it was not too bad, but these are some of the things that, like I said, you need to monitor your student. There may be some hard work in the beginning, but eventually you will get the hang of it. Lah. It is not, I, I won't say it's not that, it's not that bad, make it sound. It's bad. And once you come up with a monitoring system that you are comfortable with and it makes things easy for you, just follow through and it will fall. But what I found most effective was the peer assessment and review. La. I found that to be very effective, which I am using it for the semester, for the coming session, and it was very effective. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Pumala. It, it is very interesting because when we... Um, you you both started when um, it was fully online, and I think it's um, the evaluation, students' evaluation is very important. And I, I can find, I can, I can, I, I, I totally understand the the difficulty in when, especially like Dr. Ponmala, you are doing this fully online, even mm -hmm. even now, now so now. you are doing it online. So yeah, the challenges of evaluation, evaluating students, and um, uh, and, and and thank you for sharing your your um, experiences with us. I think, um, yeah, students' evaluation is one of the the challenges um, we face when we do this. Um, how we we talk about um, evaluating students, but have you come across students evaluating you doing flip classes? Has has an, has anyone had experience with? Students coming to you like Dr. Yanti, you had your kids um, um, telling you that this is actually good. So have you had that from students or do you notice your students' um, uh, performance uh, during con con conventional teaching? And now, like in terms of their understanding with your, you know, with the content and um, classes. Okay, um, actually, my student... I am not sure whether they realize or not I'm doing flip classroom. <laughs> I don't think that they know that I'm doing flip classroom. They don't even know what is flip classroom is all about. I think so. <laughs> I never talked to them that okay now we are doing flip classroom approach. Uh, blah 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 blah. I never I never tell them that. I just do the flip classroom um practices with them. But then uh I can see that. I, I, I never ask them directly their feedback on what I'm doing. But then uh, I have the same group uh, from last semester and this semester. So the feedback normally I, I got from them, they said, uh, Dr. Yanti, uh, uh, why don't we, we just um, do the activities and everything like usual and we don't focus too much on um, teaching and learning. <laughs> they they don't know that the activities is also about teaching and learning, but they they mm -hmm. they saw it like uh it's a game, it's an activity in a class. They don't realize with, that I have also I have included the teaching and learning part inside the activities. They said, uh, can we have uh, all all the time, all the ways in this semester to have the activities? Uh, can we uh can can you um just do the activities without giving um, a, a full lecture like usual. I said, okay, can, but then you come here to learn and to study. So I will, I will also give the lecture, but alternately with the activities that I've conducted. Lah. And then they said, ah, okay, lah, if things like that, because we, 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 we cannot see it. And because it's quite for this semester, um, uh, how to say, uh, their learning style is different. They are more to kinesthetic um, students. They love to do physical activities. Uh, so uh, because of that, I reduce my formal teaching and learning style. I do lots of activities inside classroom. And then um, uh, so far, me, myself, I didn't conduct uh, the, the traditional type of teaching 
I am a new lecturer, so I entered UM. I I didn't I didn't do the conventional type of teaching because I find that uh, teaching using conventional type is quite um quite tiring. You know, you teach a, you give a three hour lectures. You don't even know your students understand or not. There are some students at back um doing I don't know what because I I. I used to bring my kid once because um she 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 cannot attend her schools due to something lah. So I bring my kids and she sit at the back of the class. So after the class, she she come to me and she said, "Umi, you know what?" I said, "What?" Okay. Um, this one uh this happened during the beginning of flip classroom lah. So I don't do the activities uh on that day. This she, uh, my my kids say, "You know what?" Out of um, 40 students in your classroom, I can say half of them is watching YouTube. <laughs> My kid said that to me because she's sitting in uh, uh, on the on the do in yeah, uh, using. Overseas. I thought they are looking to the notes or what. So I just I just okay lah. But then when my kid say that, I say wow. <laughs> No wonder when I ask them, they just like macam blur tau, don't know what tau. So I say, okay, start from them. I, I start doing uh, lots of activities lah because um, I myself teaching for three hours in front of the class and my students doing other things. So I feel like it's like macam um, tiring tau, a bit tiring. You are struggling yourself in front of the class while your student is doing other things kan. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, starting from that, from what my kids told me, so I, I start, okay, first and foremost, no laptop in the class. So they cannot open their laptop because I cannot see what they are doing with their laptop. So no laptop in class. If you want to use phone, okay, but then you use it during um, activities, lah, during discussion or whatsoever. But don't use it during uh, when your friends is presenting something in front of the class. You are focusing on your laptop or handphone. Okay, that one is cannot lah. So to get their attention, okay. Ah, uh, so um, that's that's the feedback. That's the indirect feedback that I get from them lah. Yang direct feedback, I but I haven't asked my students yet until now. I think it's better to ask them whether they're happy or not. Yeah. Nanti shock sendiri seorang seorang kat depan. But. But that was really an eye-opener lah, what your daughter told you, kan? Yeah. I, like, I, I think I told you earlier on, like, I, to, I think, um, engage in a convention class is half an hour. And then after that, they were on the phone. Like I said, yeah. God knows what they are watching. And it's, like you said, you know, it, it's quite um, um, stressful on us wanting to teach. But you are right, you know, it, even for me now, every time I finish my class, two hour class, um, ask them any question. Often time there's no questions, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I I don't know whether they understand or they totally don't it's, understand. There's only yeah. the, the the two side of the plate, right? Like you know, when yeah. they understand fully, then they don't ask question or they don't get it at all, and that's why they don't and they don't ask yeah. you question. But anyway, so Doctor Ponmala. Um, in my case, it was a little different because I did it formally. <laughs> So um, they, um, because uh, what I did was because mine is actually a she course, um, is 100% uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call 100% uh, uh, continuous assessment. So I use um, edX, um, um, you know, feedback form, uh, feedback for for teaching and learning to the students. I told them to do it, and I also asked them to write. Uh, 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 to give a sincere feedback on how the whole thing went and I told them that this is too late for y'all because the semester has ended but for my future use and for my future students because I intend to use it so can y'all please get it done so they, they actually did that and um, I actually um, had to okay another thing that actually happened so um, if you want to know uh, um, how honest they were. They were super honest, um, brutally honest, I would say. That's the right word. The reason why I said brutally honest is because Magic actually wanted to know how I had actually used the material that was given to me uh, for my classroom. So they had an... So I actually... In with Magic... 
and uh, moderated by another lecturer from UM, not me, uh, okay, to get. And uh, in that particular feedback session, uh, they, they, they a lot of things came out. Lah, so uh, they, they, not, they didn't comment so much. I mean, there were some comments on the feedback, comments on the material. Another one was on the way the class was conducted. Uh, that was actually a bit lopsided. Um, some of them preferred it this way because they felt that they could uh, take their time and learn and they could check on the internet. But some students felt that they needed more face-to-face -face interaction with the lecturer. More holding hand, la, them, to be honest with you. La, even Magic agreed, la, it's the, so drama. La. So they actually want you to hold hand with them. So holding hand is okay. It's way beyond me. La. I can't be holding hand. You are an adult. I'm sure there's some amount of adult learning that you can actually do. So based on those feedback that was given, um, I actually improvised, improvised, improvised the entire uh, thing. But uh, to just to let you, just to let you all know, um, it cannot be um, um, though I would love to have it 100% self-directed learning, but no way lah. The, the whatever said and done, because they are Malaysian students, I guess, uh, they actually prefer if you are there with them face to face, which is actually the true nature of flip lah. Because mine is blended and flipped or flipped and blended. I'm not sure because I'm not really doing 100% um, flipped. I think uh, if you look at the concept. So um, I, every semester I have this feedback thing because I, I ask the students to give it to me. I tell them it's anonymous and I assure them normally they are right because spectrum is still open. And so I said, you can do it during a study week. Please be as honest as possible. So because every single comment that they give me, um, I take it seriously. Um, and I actually use the, the, the comments, the positive comments to improve my teaching for the coming semester. Lah. I actually do that. Even seat test comment also, uh, feedback, I won't use the word comments. Lah. I take it into consideration, actually. Uh, yeah, so... Um... It's very interesting. I think, um, like Dr. Punmala, you've been uh, teaching for so long, and I think you are the one with uh, the conventional teaching experience yeah. as well as the um, mm -hmm. the the flip Online. and blended. So yes, uh, so perhaps um, you could shed us uh, some lights um, in terms of the difference, and perhaps maybe the um, the, the the advantages of doing um, uh, the flip and blended kind of learning. Um, over the conventional one, uh, maybe in terms of um, your time or, you know, or, or other benefits at all. Okay, uh, one of the main benefits that I found about doing class online is that I don't have to cancel any class, yay. Yes, <laughs> because it is very true. when I cancel yes. the class, I have to replace <laughs> it. Now I don't have to worry about cancelling classes. So that was one good thing, la, which was like the really, really, um, uh, you know, was very that was the motivating factor. Like really motivated me actually. And then um, I also found that um, because my classes are very big, I have hundred and twenty students. Um, as you all know, I teach Asas Pembuda and the social entrepreneurship, which I'm. I actually wanted to do it for physical, but because of the pandemic, I had to switch the whole thing into online. It was a bit chaotic back in 2020 because when the semester had just begun, I think we were already going into the pandemic. I had prepared it for physical actually. So um, uh, one of some of the advantages is that um, I found that most students participated when it was online because of the fact that they were allowed to be anonymous. Most students participated and the technology out there is vast. Um, I realized that if you are able to utilize the technology, um, it can make a life a lot easier for you. Like um, they do a lot of activities in Padlet and in breakout rooms. I find that they actually do it well. And um, because the classroom is small, um, I actually tick the names of the students that actually speak so they don't get to speak again. Um, I pick different different students to speak. So I get to call everyone and um, 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 I find that um, uh, that um, there's um, a much more, I don't know, um, maybe there's a better learning culture and um, I find that students are uh, uh, learn more independently. I, I won't say that, okay, what I found that when I do it, um, 
um, in flipped uh, when I do it online is that I find that one um, in my class, I some rather find most students act, um, participate in my class uh, because of the fact that they're allowed to be anonymous. I have to stress that because if you tell them to put their name down, nobody, MS team, no one does anything. If I put Petla in MS team, yes, everybody will participate because he comes out as anonymous. That's one. And then um, if there are any any activity like Kahoot or men can see the number of students of them will participate. There are some students that will not do anything. Lah. That means they're on the camera and Sudha Tidur. Please, I have a son who's doing online. I can see, uh, sometimes I ask him, aren't you, aren't you having a class? You no, know, I, I, I want to drink coffee right now. So what's happening there? <laughs> so it's recorded. I'll watch it anytime. So I feel it's painful lah, because it's private university. Yeah? <laughs> so um, he... Um, I used to observe him, so um, I, I used to wonder how do I keep the students in, interactive. So I try not to lecture in class. So what I do is that um, I do the active, everything that I do is activity based. I mean, I don't do it often, at least um, a minimum of four times I meet the students online. Minimum four times I meet the students online. And um, during these four times, I, I switch it. I, I do the activities with them with a little bit of lecture. Um, I find that most students participate because of that. And um, uh, also is that um, I also find that they they like the fact that, I mean, these are students themselves told me, la, um, they, they like studying and independently and they like doing it on their own. They take their time and learn because like what uh, Dr. Yanti said, they all have different learning case. So um, in the so it's divided into two. The first part is independent learning on their own individually. The second where they come together as a group. And even in the group, uh, I keep telling them, do not choose your friends. You have mm. to have different trail, different um, mindset, different thoughts. So please work differently. So it, there's one question in the peer assessment. How did you find your group mates? So they, they actually have to say, you know, they actually have to take. So it's all anonymous. So nobody knows what the other person said about this. Um, it carries 5% of the marks, so they have to do that. So um, I somehow rather find it more comfortable to do it. Um, I mean, there are both advantage and disadvantages. La. Physical, the students can feel, you can see the students' um, uh, physical reaction, their emotions is captured better physical. Here, I don't see because, i be honest with you, I don't force them to open the camera because they keep telling me, oh, they got not enough data, la, this, la, that, la, mm -hmm. my computer is lagging. La. I, I'm tired of listening to all that. La. So I say, no need to open your camera, just unmute. I say, if you don't want to unmute, you must respond on the meeting chat because I am reading it, I said. And uh, so they at least or they would give me some um, reaction. You must give me some reaction. So I force them. Do they have to do something? So I know they are in the front screen with me. And mm. you won't believe it. Huh? There was one incident where I actually was calling for the student's name and the student did not respond. I called the student's name three times. And then uh, I said, oh, this student is absent, right? I said, so I'm going to mark the student absent. And the, where's, this, where's the group, I said, of this student? Within three within three minutes, I don't know somebody in the group WhatsApp the student, and the student immediately came in front of the camera, and and then later on apologized to me saying that oh I took a toilet break. It works love when you are quite forceful with the student. It works. You have to be very forceful because I made the whole group responsible yeah. over each member of the group. So it took a lot of um, it took a lot of. I'm not saying that it works for everyone, but it at least it worked for ninety percent of the class. Lah, some of them really just don't care. Lah, you you can, you cannot do anything. You it's beyond your help sometimes. But at least not actually respond after that. This is one of the challenges, lah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, control, definitely online. Yeah, yeah. Like classroom class. management online is. Super difficult, but it's manageable, I would say. Um, some or other, you can manage it. Um, my advice, um, my, me, I told myself I didn't want to be so hard on myself. So I said, okay, la, if I can get 90% of the attention, I'm already happy. La. That's it. I just stopped there. <laughs> right. I, I don't yes. want to go beyond <laughs> that already. All right. Um, so we are approaching... <clears throat> Um, 1.30. Before we let you go um, and before we take questions from the floor, um, I would like um, both of the panel to um, say a few words to empower us who have who are yet 
to um practice flip learning and um yeah you know perhaps um uh, encourage and your words um uh, to empower us would um sort of like you know boost our motivation in in, in practicing you know, flip learning so dr yati first uh, i strongly encourage everyone to start flip your classroom <laughs> Because you know why? Because okay, at the beginning it's uh, quite uh, it's quite uh, tough lah. It's quite hard to start because you need to prepare everything in advance. But then once you get the momentum, once you know how to handle the class, you will find that flip classroom is prettier compared to conventional classroom because it can save your time. It can reduce your lecture time, but at the same time, it increases students' understanding and their motivation to your classroom. That's the important thing because we want students to understand, to motivate. Once you find that the participation rate is, grow, is growing, the motivation is superb, then you will find that, wow, flip classroom is quite good. So it starts your flipping now. <laughs> okay, um, my advice would be, um, okay, it is not as bad as it seems now, right? It's okay, not too bad. I would suggest start small, start really small. Mm. Um, you can do with one lesson first. You can prepare flip with one lesson. Um, you can break your lessons up, like my lesson is broke to part one and part two. I did what part one first, then you do part two. So when you do part one, um, you just do one lesson first. So then you don't feel the, 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 the stress of doing anything. Like I said, you do one lesson first, and then you you say okay this is self-directed learning lesson one then maybe the following semester if you have time you do lesson two so eventually you will gather it together and you can start and um the other thing that I learned mainly is that use technology. I mean, we have Spectrum. Spectrum can actually help you, assist you in terms of marking, um, in terms of student and in students, this one. Like sometimes some things are done through forum. Um, as long as they answer in the forum, um, if we can consider its participation because uh, monitoring of students can be done in so many ways, actually. Of course, the easier self-marking by technology is quiz, but there are other things like um, there was a time when I, I gave them an exercise and said write 50 words on what you think it is I never even read it I just made sure everyone did it because I didn't have time but everyone did I mean I did pick and choose what I wanted to read um, but most of them had the container um, I speakers who come into class and the 100 words what they have heard because of active listening even then i pick and choose what i want to read and see whether you know in in you know whether they have got the gist of it i mean they have actually read you can do impression marking like in that sense what i'm saying so i uh, find something that you are comfortable with without short changing yourself and the students that's what i'm saying find something that you're comfortable with but technology can aid you but once you know how to use it it would be for someone who didn't even use technology, yeah, I'm I'm surprised at the power of technology. Like it really can help. And edX is out there to assist you in any way. They assisted me, so I'm sure they will assist you. Thank you. Uh, thank you both of um our panel, Dr. Yanti and Dr. Punmala. So perhaps um it's one thirty now. We can take a few questions from the floor. Um, uh, is there any questions, um, from the floor, uh, with regards to today's um. Uh, topics, blended and flipped learning. Uh, let me see if there are any questions um, on the chat room. <laughs> Why so stressful? Should be grum. Um, <laughs> it's not stressful. It's it definitely not stressful. Um, I will put it to you this way. La. Uh, it is, um, there are, okay. My first semester, uh, I was groping in the dark with my students. Second semester was a drama. Uh, second semester was okay. Third semester was a drama. But this semester seems to be okay. It just depends on the batch of students that you get. Some students, are, I think they are getting more and more used to it. Students are also quite cool about um, doing this flipped and blended. Sometimes the group of students you get also will, is very helpful. They, they can be very supportive of, it, of you if you're honest with them and how you feel. Like I am quite honest. Okay, is there any more questions from the floor? Um, hang on, let me have a look at. 
Is there any advice for flipping the classroom for postgraduate students, especially for those um, who are working adults? Actually, um, the the um, when I was with uh, when I did this course with Magic, um, it was actually meant for lecturers like us. So we were all working adults. So they actually did it in the form of flip actually. So what they did was all the materials were self-directed learning and they had tutorial sessions where we could go in to actually ask questions. I think it works very well. Flipping works very well for working adults because they have their own time and space and you can choose one particular week where you want to do the tutorial with them. Tutorial here means that if they have anything that they want to ask regarding the assignment or the course content or something that they don't understand, understand you can actually they can actually ask you during the tutorial i think it works very well i think yeah i think um i kind of like get the idea and and as as we moving into um uh like you know micro credentialing buffet courses and that kind of stuff i think the way to go is really flip classes where you know self-directed learning and because uh, when we talk about micro credentialing and particularly buffet classes we are actually um uh trying to get the working people um to join the class and i think that is um like i said you know um uh moving towards the 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 um with with the current um it was really the way to go but yeah dr pun pun mala say uh, across 14 weeks maybe you can you can pick and choose the week that you start with um you, you try your classes maybe the earlier ones where it's it's much more uh, lighter in terms of load perhaps you can start and 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 take it through uh, uh more weeks as you are more comfortable with it um let me see whether there's any more questions uh, when we ask students to present during class on a specific topic is that considered a flipped classroom or uh, we we will sit in their teaching session and provide feedbacks for further questions. So maybe Dr. Um, Yanti want want to answer that. Yeah, no, listening to student we, presentation. Yes, normally we start with accident first, and then we found that oh that is flip classroom. Me myself also start with accident, and I found that most of my friends start with accident first. Okay, actually um. The one that uh, this kind of activity I also did in my flip classroom. I give them topic earlier. Let's say um, next week I want to uh, I want to teach them about um, X X X. So I ask them to go back and uh, go back and read, and then I form a group, and then you come next week and do the presentation. So let's say I have four groups, so they will present uh, four different subtopic about that um, learning learning materials lah. And then I sit uh, and I see whatever um, output that they provide during classes. And then I will give feedback. I will ask, I, I want them to become a teacher. So, this is your students. If they have a question, then you need to answer them. Or if you have the question, then you can ask them to test whether they understand you or not. So it's like a role play session. And then uh, I will I will give my feedback if if there's a, there's a, a information that uh, they, that I need to to give the right information, then I will provide the feedback uh, on the spot. Uh, and if they don't, if they still don't understand what their friends talking about, and they ask me to simplify the information that I will do on the spot. Okay, that's also considered as flip classroom. But then, um, you need to to vary your your activities. But but presentation is one of the flip classroom. Start with accident first. <laughs> All right. Um, I think uh, last question we have here from Dr. Fong. Um, another question: How do we reflect flipping classroom approach in in the BR? In, I, I think I can I I can um try to answer this because um, I'm from QMAC too. So yes, uh, we are obliged to fill up all the forms. Like, you know, the I think this is particularly BR003 where you really, you have the the um, columns um, reflecting the, your teaching techniques. Um, I think what QMAC is really looking forward is, um, 
you can you can divide your teaching to synchronous and asynchronous right so the synchronous is the the con conventional uh, face to face so you, the asynchronous uh, the flip can be under synchron uh, asynchronous if it's something that you you get them to uh, do um, work um, before state the actual activities like you know quizzes from padlet or you, or you can you can uh, it, you can state the the tools you use like metametric or you know um or your your um uh, uh, microsoft teams discussion breakout rooms or whatever um i as as what i understand qmet and uh, qmet accept that kind of um uh, statement uh, uh, methods of teaching you just have to you just have to put um, the actual activity that you are doing and that's that should be fine uh, with regards to MQF um, uh, forms uh, we have one more question okay now I know I also do okay that's a compliment from um, uh, Dr. Julia okay now I know I also do flipping um, classes <laughs> all right I think I've I think that's all from the floor. Um, uh, uh, let me just check the. All right. Um, so thank you very much, um, our panel, Dr. Nor Hayanti and Dr. Purmala. I am very sure they don't mind um, you, uh, you know, uh, emailing you uh, for future reference. Um, Dr. Purmala and Dr. Yanti are very helpful. Um, and I think um, they don't mind um, answering um, issues um, in the future. Um, thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks again, our panel, for your time and mm -hmm. your insight in flipping um, flip classroom. And hope to see you guys again in the future. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Buanumu.